Hi, Homeworthy, I'm Jen. Welcome to my home in Boston. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hi, my name is Jennifer Figgy. We are in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. And we are in my home. I live here with my husband and our two children and our dog. This home in Chestnut Hill was built around 1920, but it's had many, many additions over the years. We bought this house in 2013, and it, we've just been taking care of it. It's a labor of love. It needs new windows. It needs you know repairs on the roof and the. But, um, but we love it and so, and that's what we do. We spend a lot of our time taking care of this house and you know, storm doors and shutters, there's a lot of shutters. It's a white clabbered house. So it um, constantly needs care and update. My husband and I originally moved to Boston in 2013 for what was supposed to be one or two years and we are still here 10 years later. So, when we found this house, I loved it right away. I love the location of it. Um, I love the trees that are here. Uh, and I just, we just thought this is a great house. I mean, there was, we just knew right away. The house is decorated with things that we like. My husband and I love to collect art. So we buy things that we love that speak to us. And then I find a place for it. I don't, um, I'm not shopping for, for anything that, that fits the house in particular. But otherwise, I do love to buy art. I love lamps. Um, I love textures. I love fabric. But um, I usually like to ask other people for advice who, who really know about that stuff because I wouldn't call myself a, a decorator. Hey, welcome to the entry of our home. Come on in. Come on in. We're so happy to have you. This is the staircase, and this is banister roping that I am actually, it's unfinished, I'm working on, but I think it actually looks great just like this, but I'll probably add some pine cones, some um, ribbon often I add, and some berries, although for, for the banisters I usually do faux berries. This, um, this is by Dan Christensen from his spray paint era. Um, this is a painting that my husband and I bought together and we love. This is a mirror that I bought somewhere, probably at an antique store in Lambertville, New Jersey. This is a chest of drawers given to me by, my, um, by our in-laws, to us. Um, this is a painting by, um, sorry, it's a lithograph, signed lithograph by Grant Wood. Um, and this is my husband's. And it's very special to him. He grew up in Iowa. And so it reminds him of the, just the landscape of Iowa. This is an, a chair my mom gave me, passed down to me, and um, I recovered it. So the bathroom was here when we got here, except it had a different, it had a terracotta floor. So I ripped up the floor and put the marble in. But, and then I replaced the sink and the toilet. Um, and then my friend Elizabeth Brennan picked out the wallpaper and the ceiling wallpaper. And, and I really love it. It's a really dark spot. It's, this house is built into a hill, actually. So you can, when you're here, you can see it's sort of, we're sort of at ground level here, actually. We're kind of almost, it's just built into a hill. So um, anyway, that, that's what I did. Some people have said, oh, why did you keep why didn't you just dig it out? And I just felt like why that would just be a big project. And, and so I love it. It's sort of a cozy place um, to go to the bathroom. It's quiet. It's cut off from the other areas of the home, which I like. I don't like it when you're entertaining and the bathroom is right next to the dining room. 
And this is the living room. So this is this has a really wide fireplace. And um, it, uh, this door leads out to the garden. This is the original living room. Um, when we bought it, I did change the mantle facade. So I'm not. So this is not the original mantle facade, but I found something that I thought would work with it, um, or that was original to the house. I, the fireplace is original, and we use it all the time in the winter. Um, and we. This room has a piano, which we love, and our son plays the piano. So, and my husband plays the guitar, and our son also plays the guitar. And so we spend a lot of time in this room, sitting by the fire um, and listening to music. This is our Christmas tree. And um, this year, it's an eight foot uh, balsam. Um, I do ornaments, I needlepoint ornaments, uh, every year I do two of them, so and I have the year embroidered on the back, uh, so that each my kids will get one of them whenever they start to have their own trees. Need, doing needlepoint ornaments are just the easiest to do because they're so small. So I just carry them with me in my purse. Um, but it's just different. Anytime we travel anywhere, I like to go into a needlepoint shop and see what they have. So it's just a collection of different places that we've we've lived different years, um, you know, this is 2012, uh, this one is 2006, and um, so I absolutely love doing these. I have one special one that my sister made for me, needlepoint ornament, I'll get it, so I think it's over here. So this is the only one that I didn't do that my sister made. So I don't design them, I just, I buy them already painted. So it's, it's a really fun thing to do. When I put the lights on the tree, I put them all the way back. So you go back and forth with the lights. Then I put a ribbon through it. So I like to think of the tree as, as basically like, think of it as a giant flower arrangement. That, that's how I do. So you wanna make sure it's balanced and, and um, there's different textures. Um, I asked my husband to get the tree this year and he came home with this one. I found it was a little small and now the lights are doing something. So I just wanted to fill it up. Um, I put this ribbon, this is a four inch taffeta ribbon. So I kind of weave that, so I do the lights, then the ribbon, and then um, I put these balls on. So these are, I got these at Terrain years ago and I probably have, I don't know, 50 of them. So I put them on, on in, you know, kind of deep into the tree and that just gives it some, some depth. Um, and then I did the needlepoint ornaments, then special ornaments that sort of have a meaning to us. And then I put these balls on. Um, and these I got this year, they're sort of a little bit kitschy, but I do like them. They're just um, battery operated lights that you can just put on the tree, just like that. Um, and then I, I put some gold tinsel on the tree. And, um, and that's about it. I do have some, some, some dried flowers in the tree. And I have done that for clients before, is put a bunch of flowers in the tree. That is a really fun thing to do. Uh, but this year, just keeping it simple with my needlepoint ornaments and some other things. I also love birds, so I do have a lot of birds on this tree. So this is, this is the mantle, still kind of a work in progress, but um, this is my husband's stocking. So I needle pointed all these stockings. I, I don't do the design, I buy the design and then I needle point it and, it and then someone else finishes it. So I made this for, for my husband. I made this, so while I was pregnant with our daughter and I didn't know what I was having, a girl or a boy. And then after she was born, then I put her initials in. So she's our oldest and then, um, our son, I actually found out kind of accidentally what I was having when I was pregnant with him. So then um, I picked this stocking for him. And then this my mom made for me in the 70s. So I really, I love this. And those, those are our stockings. My husband and I uh, love to collect art together. So this painting is by Ross Blechner. He is an East Hampton artist and we purchased it probably about 20 years ago, and we absolutely love it. Uh, it's, it's very large, so it's, sometimes it's a challenge to find a wall, but when, 
you know, we buy stuff that we love, so it wasn't that we had a wall in mind or, or anything. So our home is just a mixture of stuff that we love, and we just make room for it. So that's really what it is. This is a beautiful landscape by Seth Winnegar that um, Mike and I bought when we were in Park City, Utah. He is an artist living out there and I absolutely love the landscape and I'm originally from New Jersey so it actually reminded me of New Jersey but I, it's, I'm pretty sure it's Utah. So, but I love it, I love the frame and everything and it has been, it's always had a place above the fireplace. I do like it here. We, we do move our art around, except for that. We don't move the Blechner around because it's very large, but this has been in, in various places. I think, I think it's working here now. Um, I, I do love it. This is a very large mantle, so um, I, you know, we either need sconces on either side of it or something tall here just to balance. Uh, just how heavy the mantle is. Um, and then over here, this is, um, a, uh, this is a lithograph, sign lithograph by Bernard Vinay, who is a sculptor uh, artist, sculpture artist. And I'm, this is, I'm sure this is a very familiar um, image to a lot of people, but we bought this when we were living in New York. I think, we, I think it was around 2005. And so this is another very large piece. We do have a lot of large art, so sometimes it is hard to find the walls, but um, this has been very happy over this, this sofa. This is a coffee table I, we bought years ago, probably, I don't know, 15 years ago from uh, Brunswick. We bought it for our, our last house, so sometimes, I don't even know if it's the right one for this room, but we do love it. Um, I'm gonna do a flower arrangement here uh, on the table, and then I ju we just have a couple of books. This is one of my absolute favorite books, is the Bergdorf Windows. I absolutely love looking at the Bergdorf Windows every year. It's one of my absolute favorite things to do. And then this is a book um, with, with about Poochie, which I also love. When our children were young, we started this tradition of going skiing every year, either for Christmas or, or the day right after Christmas and we absolutely love it. So my husband grew up in Iowa and every year, he's the youngest of six, he, they would drive um, from Iowa to Steamboat Springs, Colorado. And that was, he just absolutely loved it. And he asked me if I'd be interested in doing that with our kids as well. And we have loved that. So that's part of our tradition. We, 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 we go to mass on Christmas, we celebrate Christmas Eve, um, you know, we open some presents. We have a lot of, you know, traditions, but what we really do is spend time together as a family on the ski mountain. The next room is a room that we call the family room. So come on in. Welcome to our family room. This room is functions as really just, this is a place where we hang out and spend, we watch television, there's a television over there. Um, this also leads right outside uh, to an outside patio where our grill is. And we also have a dining table here. When we purchased this house, the dining table was in this room, so it was, functioning as a dining room, but we felt that we didn't want to take up a lot of real estate, having a room be only functioning as a dining room. And when we have large parties, we move the furniture into the garage and just rent um, furniture, you know, rent a big table. And then this is a great room for having a sit down dinner party or else I've done where I have a buffet here, but we didn't want to take up real estate to have solely a dining room. Okay, this is an unedited um, just bookshelf here of family photos. Um, this is a, a duck press that is my husband's. Um, this is something one of the kids made at school. This is just various things. This was a wedding gift. Um, from our friends Suzanne and Evan. This is something that I, I bought. Uh, these are Chinese, uh, my husband and I, and, and the kids, these are our Chinese um, animals. And then just stuff we've accumulated over the years, really. This is a letterbox we received from my aunt 
for our wedding and we just keep letters that my husband and I wrote each other when we were dating and stuff we keep in there. Um, these are different books that we love. This is our daughter. This is me as a little girl. Um, some hair and pieces that my mother has given me over the years. It's just a random, it's, it's uh, again, it's unedited couple puzzles. I, l I love this room in the winter because it really has the most light in, the, on the, in our downstairs living spaces. So I spend a lot of time in this room either sitting on the sofa. It's a great place to have morning coffee actually either on the sofa or else I go outside here. This is also what I love about this room is that there's a door to the exterior right here that I use all the time and it can go right out to my garden and it's just it's, it's very cozy. All the windows really bring in as much light as possible, although we do have some pine, tall pine trees over here, so it's, it's filtered light, but it's, it's a really great place. In fact, the light is actually perfect, and my plants, I bring them in to this room over the winter, and they are very happy here all winter long. We can walk over now to where our dining table is, um, and it is all set for a Christmas dinner for four. Uh, this, um, I use this tablecloth is Mrs. Alice. My friend actually picked up these napkins for me, which is like the, the perfect color purple. Um, these are just little napkin rings that I bought at an estate sale um, in, I think it was, I forget where, in Idaho somewhere. Um, these are chargers that I bought at, a, at an estate sale. And then these are Mrs. Alice placemats that I just got, which I love. They're very well made. And I really like the green with the brown and the navy and the purple. And these are the colors of the room. So even though this is set for Christmas lunch and Christmas is mostly red and green, I just, I like this. Uh, the charger is a bit big for the placemat, but I think it's fine. Uh, these are s some Christmas spode plates that we got for our wedding. So it's a funny thing, actually, our, our wedding was in August, and when we received them, I thought, oh, what am I going to do with, I didn't want that, it wasn't on my registry, but I am so grateful to have these. It's such a great Christmas gift, uh, so, sorry, such a great wedding gift to give a couple is some Christmas plates, and I absolutely love them. So I have a lot of them, and this is a uh, bread plate. Um, and then the, uh, our silver, we registered for this when we got married, and this was my grandmother's silver, or no, my mother's silver. This, my mother has the same silver. Um, and these are great knives from Scully and Scully that I love. I think we, we yeah, we registered for those too. Um, I have these candles, so I already, I always start with the candles, okay? so. And, and I set the table, and then I do the flowers. That's always how I do it. Um, these are some beautiful new candlesticks. Actually, I ordered them for a client, and they arrived too late, so now they're mine. That, that happens a lot. Um, and then these candles. Um, so first I start with the candlesticks, and then um, I just did a bunch of bud vases uh, with ranunculas, a couple tulips, and some hellebores. And I'm, I'm actually, I wasn't quite finished with it. I'm gonna add some more. These are hellebores. I need to add a little bit more at a lower level. So I think it's really important when you're, when you're sitting, and I always kind of sit when I set the table and I'm doing the flowers, just to make sure everyone has a good view of the flowers. They shouldn't just be in the center of the table. Um, so, you know, this is how I, I do it. Making sure, you know, you don't want anyone to accidentally knock them over. So if it's too much or if it's too close to the candles, then I'll, you know, cut them down a little bit. But I'm looking at it right now and I can see that I'm going to need some more of these hellebores at a lower level so that it just kind of fills in. Well, for Christmas morning, we do a, this casserole. It's my mother's recipe and it has egg and sausage and you put it in the refrigerator the night before. So it's very easy to heat it up Christmas morning. You don't have to do anything. So it's an egg and sausage casserole. We do that in the morning on Christmas day. And then Christmas dinner, the, uh, usually my husband is a better cook than I am. So he will make either roast beef 
um, history, growing up, my grandmother would make a really good roast beef um, with popovers and mashed potatoes and gravy. That is our classic dinner. Um, but the past couple of years, we have been spending it out in, um, out in Idaho at skiing, and we've been just spending it with friends. And we go to their house or whatever they're serving. <laughs> My, my personal sense of style in the home is, is anything that I like that, um, that speaks to me. And, and that's all it is. There's no real, it, it doesn't have to be a designer or a this or that. It's just something that I like. I like the color or the texture. And that's what I would say is the personal style. But it's also a home that I share with my husband and our children. So it's, it's a, and our dog. Uh, who likes to sit on the sofa. So it's just a combination, you know, I just want our house to be a comfortable place for everyone. To be, I want, I want our, our kids to bring their friends over, I want friends to stop by, I want, I just want this to be a comfortable place for everyone. I, I love to have paper whites around and amaryllis. I love to have plants around and I think those are great to throw on the table. In terms of cut flowers, I think, um, I, you know, whatever is, is fresh and looks good, this, anything that you're gonna get now, I'm in New England, there's nothing growing right now. So I, I use a lot of greenery and berries outside, decorating outside, um, roping. Um, but in terms of fresh flowers, it's, you know, maybe red tulips. I really keep it simple uh, because it's, they're either gonna be expensive or they're, you know, they're not in season right now. So I, I, stick, with, I stick with keeping it simple, either tulips, anemones, ranunculas, but again, they're all gonna be really expensive right now. So I'll get those for Christmas dinner. But, you know, sometimes our Christmas dinner just has greens and berries on it and plants. So I, I think there's a lot going on in our house with, with the mantle and the tree and the roping that I just, and the wreaths, and I like to really do everything myself. So when it comes to cut flowers, again, I just, I keep it simple. Uh, and in terms of, you know, of, in terms of the roping and bringing greens inside, they do dry out. So um, I make sure that I mist it, uh, but otherwise I, I try to limit really the amount of greens I bring inside. Let's go into the kitchen now and I'll show you how I make some floral arrangements. Come on. This is just a little bar area where we keep, we have an ice maker and you, as you can see, a lot of stuff is stored here. So kind of a bit of a mess right now. This is my busy season at work. So I am kind of just, not everything's edited and ready to go for a big holiday party. This is our kitchen. This. Uh, New Yorker when we when Mike and I were renovating our first apartment in New York and we opened up the walls there was this was inside one of the walls so it just has a lot of meaning to us and we've framed it and we've had it kept it with us forever uh, and then this is our kitchen we spend a lot of time in this kitchen um, it has a great island and this is um, it's, an, it's more of a narrow island than most islands, I think, but it functions well for us. There is, there is a huge fireplace chimney right here, so we couldn't, um, we could take down the wall, but we didn't want to. Um, so that is why it's more of a narrow island, but, but I really do love it. It's, it's a great workspace for cooking, for making flower arrangements, uh, for eating, for doing all sorts of stuff, uh, for cooking. Um, and we have our refrigerator here. Um, a lot of people say, where's your refrigerator? Well, it's, it's here. It's behind, there's just you know, cabinetry on top of it. And then our pantry, which is where we keep all of our food. And then more storage. These are some placemats from my friend Dana Lewis from Proper Table. Uh, these are great because you can just wipe them off. So I have them set for 
I mean, I just use these year round, but they are perfect for Christmas. And these are some napkins that I bought at um, a thrift shop, uh, I think a couple years ago. This color um, on the island is blue and it is a Faro and Ball color. I love using Faro and Ball. Actually, all of the paint in our house is Faro and Ball. And I am blanking out, shoot, on the, na the name of this island, but um, you're welcome to send me a message if you'd like to know. But it is Faro and Ball and I absolutely love it. I haven't gotten tired of it at all. I think there are certain colors that are very easy to get tired of, especially blues. So um, I really love it. I would definitely recommend it. All of our cabinet color is windborn white and all of the trim in our house is windborn white. And that seems to suit just fine. Haven't changed that in a long time. A lot of people ask me, how did I get started in floral design? And that is a question, if you are looking to get into floral design, I would say the best thing to do is um, apprentice with someone and take some classes. Uh, AAFD has some great classes. I studied with EMC, um, which is the European Master Certification. In doing that course, I really gained an international community of florists, which is amazing because um, it's so interesting to learn from other florists, especially international ones who are doing things differently than we are, who have different um, a different type of nature, a different type of season. So it's, 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 really, it's, it's really a lifelong journey. I don't find that I've graduated from learning about flowers. So I'm gonna show you a flower arrangement now. This is um, a compote. I'm sure a lot of you have something like this for casseroles. Uh, this is a great thing to use for a dining table or coffee table. Okay, so we're going to make it so that it's low. I'm using a fl flower frog. Um, this I got at an antique store, so it's great for holding the flowers. Here's another one that I love. This actually was my grandmother's. So I have a collection of these. These are great for holding the stems in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a base layer. Now, one thing with my floral shears, you want to make sure that they're clean all the time, OK? Um, I also have a knife that I use, which is really great. Flowers prefer being cut with a knife because it's just one cut versus two. But um, I have floral shears, and, and I sell them. If you'd like a pair, let me know. These are my favorite because you can put them in your back pocket. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do here is that um, I, when I cut the stems, I like to cut them under water because it pulls up the water and it makes, um, <clears throat> it, it gives them more water. The flowers will just last longer. A second thing that I do is I always put a little bit of floral preservatives. There, there, so there are floral preservatives in this container and that will help the flowers to last a little bit longer. So right now what I'm doing is just I'm starting with a base layer and all of the flowers will go on top. And you can use really anything for this base layer. You can use something from your garden. Um, anything at all really will do. It's just something for the flowers to sit in uh, and you want them to sit naturally in there. Is I have so many, I have these beautiful ranunculas um, these are so beautiful. These are from Italy. I absolutely love these. So I think the combination of, of red and purple is really nice. And it just makes um, the red fresh and stand out. So what I'm going to start with is these beautiful flowers. So the first thing that I do is you take off all of the ext extra greens, OK? And I'm, I'm even pulling some of these off because the flower has to spend energy with those, keeping those greens alive. So, so as you can see, we just stick it right in the frog. And one thing that makes it really easy is if you think that you have a point, that there's an invisible point where the flower direction is going to go, it will make everything a little bit easier. So my point 
is just about right there. So I'm putting all the flowers are headed in that direction. And then it won't be confusing about, oh, where, sh where should this go or that go? Because they're all going in the same direction. Ranunculus, yes, you will see that um, in the market around Christmas time. It is a beautiful flower that is, it's, it is typical of Christmas. Hellebores is a, is a flower that's very typical at Christmas time, and I do have some of those as well. Those are, I can get the, some of those to show you, but hellebores, ranunculas, you'll always find tulips. Red tulips are a really easy thing to use at Christmas time. This is um, another ranunculus, this is a purple one. So, and I always cut off these little things right here, the little nubs on the ranunculus. Um, and again, if you slice it under water, it will help it last longer. So I'm, I'm just getting the height of this arrangement and I'm saving all of the little extra ones. I'll put those in at the end. The vessel that you use is, is, is very, very important and um, it all depends on how heavy the flower is. So for example, peonies, peonies would be okay in this container, but, but they're very heavy. My mechanic would have to be a little different. Um, so it's just really important to know the stems. Their heads are very large. So uh, actually, the, I think the best thing for peonies is just to have them own, have them on their own, just a bunch of peonies. An all-time favorite flower would be, I mean, it would probably, not really, I do love all flowers. But I love flowers that I grow myself. It's, it's, it's hard to grow beautiful flowers and to keep them alive and have them keep coming back. And I absolutely love growing dahlias. So some of the dahlias that I've grown and some of the tubers that I've been collecting are just my absolute favorites. But I don't have a favorite flower. I, I'm always open to learning about new flowers and new ways to use flowers, maybe flowers that I've you know, seen a million times and I've, I've used a million times, but it's really fun for me to try new things. I'm always open. I don't have a set thing. The, the, mostly what I do is seasonal though, so I, I try just because it's, it's, it's easy to do seasonal. And I just think it, it looks better. Nature always, nature is really the best designer of colors. Um, so this is a tulip and it hasn't opened yet. Um, when you're using tulips, make sure to cut the stems a little shorter than you actually want because it will continue to grow. But I think it, it adds a nice sort of uh, color to the, the you know, the purple and the red. So, so what am I doing for clients during the month of December? What I'm doing starting right after Thanksgiving is I'm installing garland on their mantles and their banisters. So it is a lot of physical work. Um, it's, it's just, um, it's a little bit labor intensive. So I have, so a lot of my energy is spent doing that. I, st I still do cut flowers for my clients at this time, but I would say in December, most of my energy is spent doing wreaths, mantles, and banisters. And trees, oh yeah, I forgot trees. I do trees for clients too, Christmas trees. And it's really, really fun. I, I just absolutely love doing this for, for clients because what I do is every mantle, banister, tree that I do is really bespoke for the client. So I make it, you know, I kind of, I tailor it to them. So I work from photos and measurements if it's a new client. Um, but if it's an existing client, I, I know what they like. I know their home. I know uh, what they're doing. I know how many kids they have. I know what type of parties they're having. And all of that, that really matters because um, you know, it's not just about doing what I want to do for my clients. It's really about what is going to work with everything that they're doing and their space 
and um, how they're entertaining and, and all that stuff, it really, really makes, makes a difference. It, uh, I always <laughs> ask a client, what is the occasion for the party? And it sounds sort of like a, like a personal question, but I think it matters. Is it a, is it a work party? Is it a, um, you know, a birthday party for a 30 year old? Is it a party for a, a child? Is it a, a family party? A, there's just, whatever the occasion is, the, the flowers need to be tailored to that. It can't be just one recipe for every client. And, and that's really how I do it. Um, one thing, let's see, what do I not like to do? I don't love to install wreaths on windows um, in the interior because they really do dry out so fast, but a lot of people love that look. And in fact, I do have one wreath here in my interior, but it's just, it's just gonna dry so quickly. I just think we need to move. Well, you know, everyone has their idea of how they like their house to be decorated for Christmas. And, and if a client wants me to do it, I'll, I'll do it. Um, so yeah, regarding faux flowers, I, I don't use faux flowers, but some people do. I'm not um, going to be a snob. It's, it's to each his, his own. I, what I do have faux is I have faux berries that look really good. And I spend a lot of time trying to find the right faux berries. So I'm just gonna turn this so you can see from the other side. Um, so yes, I will use faux berries. I don't think it's a good idea to have real berries in the house if you have children or dogs or you're just not gonna be careful. I'll bring real berries into my house because I keep an eye on them. And in fact, faux garland is great. And what I would do with faux garland is just use it as my base. I, I went to a client's house the other day to do her banister and she said oh I'm so embarrassed I have faux garland outside and I said oh well what I would do is just you know cut from your yard and add real to that and then so you have your it, it looks like real but it's the bulk of it is already done and the lights are done um, you know people just I think it's really fun to do Christmas yourself and and if you don't have the time or the energy, then I think faux is, is fine to do. Oh, oh, these are, these are anemones. So I, but you know what? You can see how this would change the dynamic and of this, the feeling of this flower arrangement. I'm not sure if I like it or not, um, but we can, I'll show you, I'll add something in. Color is so important when doing flowers. It's something that I, think about a lot. Uh, so the other thing I do is I always make, a, we're gonna add it in and we'll, we'll see. It could change the mood, we may not like it. One thing you can always take flowers out and that's very important. Um, but I was saying that before, whenever I do a flower arrangement, before I do it, I, I always draw a sketch. I have a, a notebook that I, I carry around, I order them in bulk, and um, I, I do a sketch. I take measurements or photos, but when I get home, I'll do an old-fashioned sketch. And I just think it helps me, it helps my mind, and even if it's something small, it, um, I can't do it unless I do a sketch. And I, I think it's a great idea for, for anyone. It will help you when you're shopping for flowers. Um, it will help you choosing the flowers because you've already got the heights down. And then especially for a dining table, you need to account for candles and placemats and everything like that um, and height and how heavy the flower is. So there, there's a lot that goes into it mentally so if you have th things laid out um, so a very detailed sketch for me would include you know the floral recipe I would have botanical and then I also include like like a, a packing list what 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 do I need um, 
people ask me to do sometimes, you know, their, their table flowers for a dinner party. So I like to make sure I know, again, everything. What are you eating? <laughs> Which sounds like such a personal question when a client's like, oh, I'm just, can you just do my table flowers? And I'm like, sure, what are you eating? I mean, but I just think everything matters. And if you think about it ahead of time and plan, it will be, the flow will be so much better and quicker and it will make sense. And your guests will really, really have a good time. The, the point of flowers is to bring out, it, it'll make your party more enjoyable, really. Um, if you put some thought into what flowers you, you have in your house, on your table, um, flowers give us all different emotion. And I know you got excited when you saw this color because it, it does something to us. And so if you can think about that ahead of time, it'll make for a much more enjoyable party for everybody. So these tulips are really, are really, let's see, okay. Uh, these tulips are really shut and they're going to open, they're gonna keep open, but I'm just opening this just a little bit uh, for you. And you can see if you, if you gently turn around the leaves like this, um, it almost sort of looks like an orchid, but it's a great way if you wanted to have this type of flower. It, it really does look good in here compared with the other flowers. See it just like that compared to the other tulip that we didn't open. Um, and I can open this one too because I like it because it adds a little the yellow and that really dark dark. It's like it's the same color as that anemone blue. So it, it's like you pick that up again, uh, which I think looks great. But you can see how it's really the color and the style is really coming together. Um, if you were going to be shopping, knowing how, how many flowers should I buy, I would say this is, um, I would say about, I don't know, three I, w I mean, if it was me, I would buy more than enough. I would buy seven bunches of flowers. That sounds like an awful lot, but if you really want to make an, an impact, um, then you, know, you want to have more. I, I think if this is for Christmas dinner and um, you're going all out, then I would definitely do more. Then you need, because if you have too many flowers, you can always just put a couple in the powder room. Or if you have guests, you can put them in the guest room. Um, so I personally think you can never have too many flowers. Or you can, you can give them away. You can call someone and say, oh, I have too many flowers. I can't imagine that ever happening to anyone. I have too many flowers. I don't know what to do with them. So once this is finished, I'll be keeping an eye on it. It's really great, since they are live, it's really great to change your water. I mean, daily if you can. Um, and you just kind of, you know, you hold the container over the sink and it just kind of pours out. That, that's what you do. It's, it's not brain surgery, but it's, if you can take, and it takes, does not take much time, if you could do that, every day when you have fresh flowers, then your flowers won't die. And some flowers will last longer than others. Uh, the tulips will last a long time. There are some flowers that don't mix well with other flowers. Um, I mean, daffodils, for example. Uh, so these are scabiosas, and they always come with this plastic thing on the sleeve, and I always take it off. So you just take it off like this, and this doesn't go in the compost. This goes in the trash. So I'm, I do try to compost everything. It will, make, it will make you have less stuff in your garbage, and it's 
also environmentally friendly. But all of this plant material will break down. So you don't need to put it in your garbage. It'll break down naturally. So you can see how this is turning out. And this is, it only took me about 20 minutes. And this is such a great addition to your holiday table. Um, and it will just bring so much joy to your meals. And it will last a couple of weeks. I'd love to show you my studio, so come with me. Okay, so this is my, this is my studio. Um, I have a sink down here. And um, this is in buckets. It's just my studio. It's kind of a mess. These are things that I've collected over the years. Um, these are all my flower frogs, which I use a lot, and that collection is still growing. This is, I do wrapping over here. Um, I have turntables that I sell at workshops. So these are them. Um, I have some of my tools in my toolbox. And then I keep everything under here, just uh, wire and all the mechanics that I need is, is all stored under here. And, um, and then in here is really just my place where I can come and sort of be inspired. I create new projects. Um, I have a lot of containers. I have a whole collection and I keep them organized by color because that seems to be easiest for me to, to see what I need. I've done a lot of floral styling where I help people um, who are doing shoots of their interiors. So I'll, I'll work from a shot list and, um, and I bring a lot of containers on the shoots on occasion. Um, and the reason I have so many containers is that every flower really will look, will look good in a certain container. Some need to be heavier for different flowers. And so you can't necessarily say, I want to use this container in this, and I want to put X flowers in if, it's, if the container won't hold the flowers and the stem. So it's a whole thing. But um, anyway, and then this is just some, some stuff for clients that are going out since I'm doing trees for people. I do trees and dinner tables and tablescapes. I just have a collection of things. And as I said, I'm sort of mid season. So I'm just, I've done a lot of the creative work and now I'm just right now installing. That is what I'm, I've been up to right now. This is, this is my desk and this is where um, any inspiration pictures that I love, I just, um, I put up on the wall and these are some of my favorite books and these are the ribbons that I want at Newport which I love um, and you know this is where I I write notes um, and it's sort of a great place for me to just sit and think about the next project and do some sketching. This space right here is really my artist studio. I, I don't um, have a space anywhere else. I really want to keep um, just my expenses low, which is one of the reasons. But then also, I really like this space, actually. And so I can't imagine having to, to bring everything somewhere else. Um, but I find, that, I find that also I can really work anywhere. I'm not really attached. Um, to to anything. I just need to be inspired. Um, I love you know, being out in nature is one of my favorite things. I mean, sometimes the studio can drive me nuts because it can get messy and everything else. And I just want to, you know, go away, like take take a hike or just be out in nature to reset. So I, I love having it in the house. And it, I think it's, I don't have a problem with it. I've made do with the space that is here, it's a very small space, but there is a door that goes directly to the outside. And this isn't a place where I bring clients, it's really just for me. I think that I, what I love about this house is that it is, is, it's very unique and I, I love the garden here, um, but I do wish it had a little more sunlight, but otherwise I still really love it, I really love it. And I mean, I would, if, I, if we ever had to leave this house, I would, have a hard time saying goodbye. But on the other hand, I do find that part of our job, my husband and I as owners of this house, is really to, to maintain it and keep it um, just updated. It's been around since 1920, so there's, there's a lot of stuff to do. And I, that's part of, of 
what we do, and, and I enjoy doing that. Home to me is a place where I can come and relax and recharge and where our family, our children, my husband, our dog um, are all a part of. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.